so this is revisiting a reactive router with Ivy. And I've been wanting to give this talk uh, for a while and research this idea for a long time. So I'm pretty excited about finally being able to give this talk. So my name is Brandon Roberts. You can follow me on Twitter at Brandon T. Roberts, where I tweet about gifts. I tweet out gifts. I talk about sports. And sometimes I block people who eat smoked barbecue because that's really not a thing. I'm a software engineer at Narwhal. You can find I'll talk about them more in a second. I'm also a GDE in Angular uh, and a maintainer on the NGRX project. So as I mentioned before, I work at Narwhal and we love what we do. We help software development teams build large applications to better way. We offer consulting, engineering, and training. We offer best practices and have deep knowledge in Angular, NGRX, and other frameworks. So if you need some help, just reach out to us, look at our services page, take a look at our open source project NX that you probably heard about, and just talk to us. So let's get into uh, the agenda here. So I'm going to talk about kind of the history of routers and AngularJS and Angular, because it's kind of my thing. I'm going to talk about Ivy and what how that applies to routing and the things that I came across in building a building a router. So and who's ready to hear some hot takes? Nobody? Okay, cool. But I do want to give some shout outs though to the people who have entertained my ideas about routing along the way. And some of those people are Brian Ford, uh, of course Victor Savkin on Narwhal team. Uh, Victor Boucher and Jason Aiden, just to name a few. I'm sure there are others who came along the way. And uh, definitely want to shout out Rob also, Rob Wormall. So first, I want to talk about uh, AngularJS routers, because from my experience, a lot of Angular developers may have started uh, using, using the after version 2.0. Uh, so there are a couple of routers primarily used in AngularJS. There's the first one in AngularJS, which is a module named ng-route. And this module provides you with an ng-view directive to render routes with. And in most cases, you only had ever, ever had one ng-view in the entire application. So there's, this one has been used some. But if you're like me and you built a few AngularJS applications, you most likely used UIRouter. UIRouter gave you a UI view and had uh, more flexibility in AngularJS applications than was like a community built project. UI Router was built on top of promises because that's what we did in AngularJS, right? It had support for multiple outlets, resolvers, and guards, lifecycle events, and it was just about rendering components. Next up, I'll cover the uh, Angular 2, as it was called back then, router. Uh, which was being developed at the time, which was probably around, around about the time I got involved with using and building things with Angular. So the Angular 2 router had a lot of interesting goals. It was written primarily using promises as its primary interface. And I know what you're thinking, where you're supposed to be in this reactive land where observables are becoming more prominent. But one interesting to note is that that router still was using observables underneath. It just wasn't exposing them publicly. So back to where we were, uh, it uses promises. It had a tree of routers at each level in the hierarchy as opposed to one single router. It was also just about components as there were no NG modules at the time. And it was going to be backported to AngularJS. Along while this was happening, uh, we were looking at, you know, because of course we all like to build things and of course me and Mike, like Ryan are addicted to building routers, uh, Mike and myself uh, built NGRX router independent of the Angular router because we wanted to take a fresh look at reactivity with reactivity in mind. So it was, of course, uh, built using observables and for everything from route traversal to route params and query params, support for router links and route views, and it was just about loading components. And you can see how these, these things may sound familiar to you. So if we fast forward to Angular Router version 3, uh, the team wanted to make sure it kind of fit, uh, looked at this bit, what we were doing, and wanted to make the Angular Router more reactive to fit into this new world. 
So you know what happened next, right? The team was like, hey, that's a pretty cool ride you, ride you got there. And then I'll let you fill in the blank here. But if we're being serious about it, we met, we did meet with the Angular team about the NGRX router and they appreciated the concepts that we, the concepts and the look that we took in that approach and wanted to fold those concepts into the framework. So me, Mike, Victor Safkin and others went back to the drawing board and redesigned the Angular router with the concepts of NGRX router in mind. So NGRX router goes to Flatable stock and comes, gets a fresh rebuild and comes back as Angular Router. All of these GitHub repos still exist today, so if you want to go check them out and uh, dig deeper, you, they're still there. The one thing that was added with the integration of Android's Router as the Angular Router was ng modules. So one thing to note: if you ever wondered why there was never an Angular version three, now you know. Angular Router was reintroduced in version four and is what most of you know today. So now that we have more context about the history of the routers in AngularJS and the routers upcoming in Angular, let's fast forward to today. Angular Ivy has landed officially and now we can really start to rethink some of the things, uh, rethink some of these ideas in Angular, routing being one of them. So I won't rehash, completely rehash all the new things in Ivy. As mentioned, uh, Kara and Alex did an excellent job talking about those. Well, I'll just cover them in general. Ivy, of course, brings a new rendering engine where components only bring in what they need. There's this concept of locality where they have the instructions that they need at runtime. And it also has a brand new compiler with many new features including better type checking to go along with the new rendering engine with AOT being enabled by default. So the question is, what does this do for, what does Ivy do for routing in Angular and how can we leverage that for a fresh look at a reactive router? So if you'll indulge me for a second, let's talk about the dream in Angular as far as routers are concerned. So prior to Ivy, when I talked about the current routers, if we were looking at the routers in AngularJS uh, and even the early ones in Angular, uh, they were all about components and ng modules and later value versions of Angular were all about injectors because inject the ng modules were the way that you got these in injectors and the context needed for a compilation of components. But with Ivy, we're moving towards a future where you can primarily work with ng modules being optional. And we can rely more on the components that have an injector hierarchy themselves and the components have the context themselves needed for their life cycle. So we can get back to a place where routing in Angular is just about using components again, which simplifies the mental model for new users of Angular as well as experienced ones, which is what we want, right? So building a reactive router, I mean, what does that actually mean? What, what do we mean when we say it needs to be reactive? And I heard this term from Rob, and I agree with this term. Uh, the term is observable in, observable out. We want streams, we want streams of URLs to, as far as routing is concerned, streams of URLs to be transformed or mapped into a stream of components. We also need streams of information from the router for things like route params and query params and the active route. So once again, you've seen this picture before from Rob Wormald and it still reigns true today in my mind for reactivity. Everything is a stream. So as you know, at least with the current, the Angular router, there are many things that we need to consider uh, when if we want to build a react a router uh, that's reactive But we'll just keep this scope to a few things for this talk So what do we need? We need a way to interact with the history web API uh, Which is of course what's driving it driving us when we're building these single page apps APIs provided by the browser 
uh, to control the history stack. We need, of course, the router to have the inf uh, contain that global information, including a stream of URL changes. We need something to parse the URL into a structure that we can uh, digest. And like I said, that global information such as query params or the hash or fragment, a way to register routes, route matching, and rendering of components. So as I mentioned before, the history API gives us where we want to listen for URL changes as well as browser events such as push state events. So the Angular location service uh, gives us some of these things already out of the box and you could uh, to interact with the browser API so we can leverage that. So this is not a router service. We would uh, inject the location service and listen to URL changes that we uh, push through the framework and uh, events that happen through the browser APIs and push those in as part of our stream. Next, we want to talk about how we parse the URL. And I'm a big proponent of using uh, web, more web APIs. And there's a relatively new URL web API for parsing URLs according to the spec. So it gives us less code we have to bundle in our, into our application because it can be used in the browser. And it, of course, it could be extended for or configured for extensibility. And it gives us information like the path, query params, and the fragment. So this is just a small example of how we could pass our location to this web API and return that information back so that we can use it in our route matching. So as I mentioned, this is all about components. So let's take a declarative approach uh, at defining a router and routes uh, with this way. Because we want the router contains routes and the current activated route. And if we're thinking of this in terms of streams, we want to take the latest URL and our set of routes. We want to find a match and set that route as active. So there's a component for that. Also, we want to register these routes uh, using components also. The components has two important parts about it, the path and the component that we want to bind to. Now, there are many different strategies to use to match the current path of the URL with the route. But in my research and from previous experiments, I chose path to regexp because it has powerful pattern matching under the hood. So to register the route, we drop the route component inside the router, uh, inside the contents of the router component, and the route is registered with its parent and able to match routes as they are parsed. So each, once the router is listening to the URL changes and it finds a match, each route itself has a place or an outlet to render that component if it's a match. And this is where Ivy comes in. We have this component here and we have an outlet for it. And it's pretty much as simple as using the render component, the new render component API in Angular. And you see the symbol in, uh, in the slide here uh, because it's a semi-private API that will come public hopefully in the future. But it's still a work in progress. Like also, if we wanted to use route params for a particular uh, route to pass to the component, it's just as the same way as passing that to the path and letting it match on that. So we have our router, we have our routes, and we still use that first uh, match win strategy here. If we look at the about component, we can see some of the streams that we can get out of this. The route params is a stream on its own because everything is a stream. The router also contains streams of global information, such as URL, query params, and the hash, so that we can combo compose and combine these streams together easily within the component. Also, I want to talk about lazy loading because dynamically, lo lazy, dynamically loading components has become much simpler with Ivy. We take another look at the route component. Uh, here we're just buying to a, a component itself, uh, combined to the component itself, 
And if we were looking using an Angular router, you'd use low children because we're so used to using ng modules. But we want to get back to using components and use low component instead. So to show what that looks like, we have bind to a variable in the component class that's low component. And in the component class itself, because Ivy lets us take advantage of that locality, the component has everything it needs to render. And we can render that dynamically. And we've all written this before to wire up route providers. So you could imagine a future to where we're just using the route providers itself to inject the instance of the router. Or with the new injectable APIs, we may not even have to, we could just drop our component into our template and go forward. So as I mentioned here, there are still some things I didn't cover. Things like guards and resolvers, if we're taking a fresh look at this, are streams that can be pushed down into the component because I want to drive home that we're keeping this idea of components and streams in the front of our minds. So to recap, we talked about AngularJS routers and uh, AngularJS routers and Angular routers. We talked about what Ivy is and how Ivy enables the dream of getting back to just components for routing. We talked about what being reactive means, observable in and observable out, and covered uh, idea of what a, react a react declarative reactive router could look like. If you would like to see a demo of what I discussed here in this talk, visit the GitHub repo and try it out. I'm really interested in getting some more feedback on this because I'd like to see uh, this become a real thing. A couple of last things uh, we mentioned, we announced early NGRXConf is coming. Uh, now NGRXConf is coming. It's going to be two days, 20 speakers, November 5th and 6th, not just about state management. A lot of other deep dive topics on reactive Angular will be covered. You can find more at comp.ngrx.io and tickets are currently on sale. And also, we just launched for, for Narwhal, we just launched NX Cloud. And this helps you speed up your build and test times by up to 10x. So you can sign up today and get a free 25 hour time saving coupon. You can find out more at nx.app. Thank you for having me.